Hello everyone, Human Hard Drive here with another Raspberry Pi project. Today we're going to be talking about a module which can be added onto one of the two Raspberry Pi CSI connectors. And today we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi camera board, which I still have in the box here. So this video is going to be one of a couple videos doing some stuff with the Raspberry Pi module because it's a really cool module that does picture so it adds you know camera functionality to your Raspberry Pi. Now this first video is going to serve somewhat as an introduction to the Raspberry Pi camera module, some warnings, and a simple project as to what you can do with it. So as you can see right now it comes move that out of the way comes layered between these two pieces of styrofoam but more importantly it comes in this anti-static bag. Now, why does it come in the anti-static bag? A lot of electronics come in an anti-static bag. If you've never worked with camera modules before, or any bare, any bare camera module board, you should know, and this is a warning telling you right now, that these are a lot more sensitive than standard just bare computer boards like the Raspberry Pi. You can touch a couple of components accidentally and you're probably going to be fine. This, even if you think you've uh, discharge yourself, grounding yourself, you should still take extra precautions. I'm wearing an ESD bracelet right now, and I'm still not going to touch any of the bare components on the board. So just be very, very aware that this is a very sensitive module, and it is very easy to break. So I'm just going to pull this out of the bag. And obviously, whenever you're not using the module, put it back in the bag. It's always a good idea. So here it is. As you can see, it's very, 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 very tiny. It's uh, just about as large as the Raspberry Pi's Ethernet jack. It, it shoots both stills and video. I have some specifications. It shoots in stills of 2592 by 1944 pixels, and it can also shoot HD video in both 1080p and 720p. So you get uh, quite a bit of bang for 25 bucks. Um, it does only shoot video, doesn't shoot audio as well, so somewhat of a limitation, but hey, that's what you get for something this small. It comes on a uh, ribbon connector, which is about 6 inches long. Um, little thing to note is that you want to make sure that the ribbon connector is always firmly attached to the board. There is a sunny connector here, which you also want to make sure is always firmly attached and when we set this up you'll want to make sure that this end is firmly attached so let's set that up there are zoom in my camera here there we go zoom in the camera a little more there are two CSI connectors on the board one tw behind the Ethernet jack and one towards the back of the board this one is for the camera this one is for an LCD so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the jack ever so carefully then we're gonna make sure that the pins face toward the back of the board so like so, so that the dull blue side faces the Ethernet jack. We're going to put it in nice and square. Tilt it to the camera this way. Uh, excuse me, please move. Thank you. I'm going to tilt it like that. Make sure you put it in square. Everything should feel nice and flat. And then push in on either sides of the connector. There we go. So it should feel pretty snug. If you pull on it, obviously if you pull on it too hard, it will completely remove itself little tug to make sure it's good make sure everything looks even Oop. make sure everything looks even where it's plugged in and you should be good uh, so the project we're going to be doing today is setting up the Raspberry Pi on the camera as a very simple um, video server so you'll be able to receive video from this from uh, any internet connected device so you can set this up as a simple security system if you like bird watching you can have this sit outside of a window you can watch your pets whatever uh, for this, I'm going to be using a um, Wi-Fi wireless dongle, USB. Obviously, you can use Ethernet if you want, and I'll just be powering it through a USB port. Nice and simple. Okay, so before we set up the streaming software, I thought I'd just take a little time to devote that to setting up the Raspberry Pi camera. So I'm accessing the Raspberry Pi via PuTTY through an SSH connection. Now, there are three commands you're going to want to do, sudo apt-get update upgrade and then sudo rpi update. 
Now all three of these commands take an extremely long amount of time and they're fairly easy and straightforward to run so I'm not going to bother your time with it. Now, what you want to do is sudo raspy config. You want to open up the configuration menu. And option number five is enable camera. So you're going to do that, hit enable, and there we go. You've just enabled the camera. You hit finish, and you can just select a reboot. Go ahead and reboot it. Okay, so setting up the streaming service, uh, again using SSH via PuTTY into the system, because it makes it a lot easier than trying to capture directly off the Pi. Now, the system I'm using to stream video is used by a Mr. Miguel Grinberg in his blog. Uh, in searching for a way to set up a streaming service for the Raspberry Pi, I stumbled upon his solution, which works very well for what I think I'm trying to accomplish and show to you guys. So the way his works is by using an MJPEG streamer. And is, since it's native to a lot of routers, it's a very simple and easy thing to set up. So. With, that's the setup we're going to go through today. So we're going to start by running sudo apt-get install install libjpeg8-dev uh, image magic I can spell image magic lib v4 and don't worry if you're not following this uh, I'll link to the blog in the description where you can see all of this. I'm just showing you what the output should be when you run these commands because I know that's a lot more helpful than just reading some description of how to do it. So user include Linux. So the first step was to build all the dependencies necessary for the streamer. Now we've got to set up a library file which is necessary to do the streaming. So I'm just moving some things around. Video dev dot h. That one's not going to get anything back. And now for this one, I'm just going to I'm just going to actually copy and paste. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Copy, paste. There we go. So now we're going to download the actual streamer itself. Let this download. A lot of time will, of course, depend on your internet connection. Then once that's done, you're going to unzip the file you just downloaded. It's just going to look like that. And now we're going to build all of the files. So we're going to move into this directory. And then we're going to run make on this, which is actually going to build all the source code you just downloaded. And make can sometimes take a while to run, especially for this. This is going to take anywhere between three to five minutes. Okay, and then once that's once all the files have been made, you're going to jump oh not copying, there we go. You're gonna jump here and we're actually going to install what we just made directly into Linux. Or we're going to make it so that it can be accessed. There we go. And now we're going to start up the camera, which is very easy. So we're going to make a directory where the images are going to be stored, basically captured from the camera, and then sent out. And then we're going to set up the camera command itself, which is this. So basically all this does is it takes a still image. It's not going to demonstrate a preview uh, with 640, so it's a 640 by 840 image and then it's going to save them here so it's saving them to this stream location we just created and we're essentially just doing a uh, time lapse and if you hit this there we go so now it's doing what it's actually saving the images over and over again and now what we're going to do is run one last command 
Now, even though it's printing this out, you can still paste in and then hit enter, and now it is actually streaming. So, if you open up a browser, and in that browser's URL bar, you put in the IP address of the I of the Raspberry Pi with uh, opening port 8080, and you hit enter. If you did everything right, you should be brought to the MJPEG streamer little thing, and there is the static. There, here's the snapshot. It's a little delayed, but if I look, I should be able to. Hello, come on, pay attention. And it's being a little laggy, apparently. Oh wait, that's static. Hit stream. There we go. So, hello. So yes, you can see that it is quite delayed. So me across my dorm room. So, as you can see, it's not too bad for a uh, 640 by 480 image. I'm going to look at the camera now. It's not bad for a 640 by 480 image, and uh, not too bad for about 5, 10 minutes work. So, obviously, this isn't transmitting audio because there is no audio on the Raspberry Pi camera, so everything you're hearing is obviously coming from the headset. But, yeah, that is it. However, if you... I'm going to go back to the computer. If you go back to Putty and I terminate, or no, yeah, oh no, that's not doing it. If you if you close the command window, this is creating a command. So if this is creating a series of commands, so if you close the command window, if I was running this in the start x, if I closed lx terminal, this would stop working. And if I close this, not sure if it will shut down the MPEG streamer. But yep, so uh, even closing even closing putty is going to cause it to do that. So obviously this command you're going to want to run from your Raspberry Pi, but that's pretty much it. It's a pretty straightforward and simple way to set up JPEG or uh set up streaming from your Raspberry Pi. So that is it for this video. Like I said, I'll link everything you need to do this in the description. But, yep, that's it. So, uh, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.